All right, we are here with week 15 of It's Business Time. We are joined this week uh, by Mr. Christian Shane Dougherty. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me, From Society Media. Yes, thank you. Um, This was a really cool uh, grab here. It was through Genesis. We'll get into that here in a moment. Amazing guy. Music is amazing. Absolutely. It, it really is. And and before we get rolling, I do always like to give a quick shout out to Stitch House for having us. Yes. Thank you for having um, us, Stitch House. They are right here on Market Street. They have 12 local beers. Come through, check it out. I am drinking the uh, Oktoberfest. And what is it that you're drinking here? This Christian? is the delicious road soda. Nice. Typically, I'm a Miller Lite or a Heineken guy, but this beats it all. So thank you for having us. Cheers. Cheers. So thanks again to Stitch House. And with that, we are rolling. So Thank you so much for joining this week. It's my pleasure. Um, I looked, so I try not to do too deep of a dive. I like mm-hmm. to be a little bit surprised, um, but I did look through a lot of your stuff. Uh, website is gorgeous. Thank the you. The publications are gorgeous. We try. You, you actually brought through uh, an, an episode of one of the magazines here. I did. Um, it looks like when I was on your website, it looked like you have all sorts of similar uh, publications. Uh, and so you, you are the, the founder of... Uh, Christian is the founder uh, of Society Media. Right on. And and so I like to start with a little bit of a backstory. Sure. Um, so tell me, tell me, what were you doing before you you were you started uh, Society Media, and then how did that kind of transition you into the the early days? What were the early days? Oh, sure, absolutely. Um, of Society Media, where were you coming from, and how'd you wind up there? Right, right on. Well, uh, what did, what happened is that I uh, went to University of Delaware, and uh, local oh, nice. local. Uh, me too. There you go. Local local high school as well, and. Uh, I went into the, the banking industry. Uh, for those of you who remember, it was the MBNA America Bank, mm-hmm. and I was big in customer service and human resources. Mm-hmm. Um, but my passion and my hobby during that time was photography, so very, very amateur stuff. And what had happened is that on the weekends, I would try to get as many free gigs or part-time gigs or, or mm-hmm. whatever, taking photos of landscape or anything for, for any mostly free. Mm-hmm. So to make a long story short, I, I happened upon a gentleman that worked at the Philadelphia Inquirer and um, he had my number and one instance on a weekend, uh, there was a call out. Mm-hmm. And so they called me up and said, hey, we know that you take decent photos. Would you mind covering a fashion show for the Philadelphia Inquirer? Oh, wow. Yeah. So that nice. was in Philly and you know, obviously that's not that far from here. So I was, it was my honor. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, uh, with great gratitude, I, I covered the event and that was it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I quit Monday morning and uh, continued on with uh, learning as much as I possibly could. Now, given this was back in the late nineties, so I hope I'm not showing too much of my age or anything, but um, it, I did, I just learned as much as I could. Yeah. Uh, with cl- age comes wisdom. Correct. So <laughs> I got into photojournalism. Uh, I worked for a company out in Los Angeles. Um, covering some current events and local events and eventually just pulled the trigger and launched an, a magazine in Trolley Square um, called Cashmere uh, okay. in 2000. I remember that. Yeah, so that was right above, um, the, the, I think, the Happy Harry's yeah, in yeah. Tr- across from uh, the Logan House. Mm-hmm. We, were, we were up top. We had a great view, the whole Trolley Square area, um, and just, just rock and roll from there yeah. and uh, gave it our best shot. Um, unfortunately, some... Some events occurred where, uh, you know, global events and catastrophes with 9-11 and Mm -hmm. uh, D.C. had some things going on in it. So, uh, you know, we had to just find out other avenues to to make it happen. So just freelancing around for many years and saving up and um, just doing whatever we could to get back in the game. So around 2015, believe it or not, was the uh, the really the tipping point where. Everything kind of came together. All the experience, um, all, all the all the grunt work, all the yep. guerrilla marketing. I mean, everything. We, yeah. we didn't have any investors. We, we just went out and just started selling what you believe in. So yeah. we really believe yeah. in our product. And at that time, it was travel, a lot of style. Mm-hmm. And uh, we just went for it. And that just kind of got us to where we are now, where everything's completely changed, of course. The digital age is growing and, and upon us but um it's a learning experience so now th- now we have several different titles right and um with the technology that's out there now it's it's not easier but it's more accessible yeah yeah you know gotcha yeah I, i'll i'll display a couple of those titles here 
uh, above us. Um, so, so this was 2015. Was the f- the founding of Society Media? Correct. Gotcha, gotcha. Because you're just you're definitely describing um, my my stomping grounds. I grew up in this area as well. Uh-huh. I was probably uh, doing a show across same height as you right at on. the Logan House during okay. those times. Um, so okay, so the 2015 you found Society Media. It, tell us about the early days. Was this you? Was this you and a friend? Like. Ha- ha- how many kind of uh, people were involved, um, and and then and then where did you see the first like legitimate right piece of growth success? Right. Well, right. well the key I think to, to any success and any sort of um, startup is surrounding yourself with with awesome people. Yeah, you, you can't you can't do it all on your own. Um, if you think you can, it, it's 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 a lot. It's yeah. a lot. So um, we went through a, a couple of folks that mm-hmm. were committed to the cause, but when you when you commit to such a life changing event where you need to quit your job right. you need to sacrifice you need to spend more time in the office you need to uh, t- tell your family that you're not going to be there for dinner right, um, right. that that tests a lot of lot of folks so i i don't fault anyone for that mm-hmm. i you know i i um respect that so at the end of the day it it ended up after about two and a half years of some really awesome folks um, that it just became me and um, just some freelancers. Yeah, yeah. So, so we would contract a bunch of guys or, or girls or, or folks to just kind of project by project. Right, right. And um, that's kind of when I became, I, I, cr- I kind of transitioned from the, uh, the founder to like a curator. Right, I, right. I kind of figured like, like when you're in an art gallery, you're curating so many pieces of art that that's kind of that sort of situation as opposed to being, yeah, I'm the founder, I'm the owner, I'm the CEO. We're not really playing that because we're in a people business and a relationship business. Yeah, We're yeah. not really salespeople. So um, that's pretty much the attitude and the track that we took yeah. to really get to know people. We'd rather have five great clients, right. five solid advertisers, than have 30 folks that come and go. Yeah, yeah. I understand that well. I, I often use the adage, uh, you know, as every business is kind of growing, they, they find that moment where you, you either have to find 100 people to give you a dollar right. or one person to give you 100 or two to give you 50, whatever it is. Every business kind of has that. You know, obviously, if you're selling cheap widgets, you want you want the one model, right? Right. But if, if you're really looking for high quality people, high quality products, um, you know, and it, it, you do wind up kind of curating, and it's better to have a handful of really quality people right. than it is to spread yourself too thin. Oh, abs- absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you you know that. Um, you've got, you know, you've got your company. So, mm-hmm. you know, how how do you manage? Yeah. Well, this is mostly about. I, I'll do a whole separate <laughs> series on that. No, no. But I appreciate that. But but um. So 2015. Okay. You're you're starting to to curate. You're starting to work with different um. Uh, you know, different artists and different, uh-huh. you know, content creators and, and folks like that. Was there a moment that you said to yourself, this is actually working? Like, was there like a, do you remember a, because a lot of times entrepreneurs, like they're, they're in their own heads, right? And they're mm-hmm. like, I got to keep going. I got to keep yes. going. Um, but was there a moment where the outside world gave you validation? Oh, absolutely. That you're on the right path. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, we're, we're doing a lot of business in, in, in the East, on the East Coast or the Mid-Atlantic region. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So D.C. to New York, it's mm-hmm. kind of like, where I was existing for forever. Right. But, you know, when, when we're curating different titles, so, for instance, when I, when I say title, I mean by magazine right. title. So we had our society magazine, which yeah. was our main pillar. But then, you know, we were talking to folks that, that were well-to-do but had health issues right, or something, right. or they were, inter- were interested in more than just travel or style. Right. So right. The, the, the way that we got into more and more content mm-hmm. w- was not because we were driving it. It was because we were f- giving folks more information on what they were looking for. Right. So to answer your question, when we found that moment was when I had a conversation with a gentleman that spoke very little English mm-hmm. in the south of France. And <laughs> he was, I mean, we talked for like two hours. Right. And it was that moment where I thought that I could, I, I, just by being true right. and, and not selling anyone on the advertising or not once did price come up. Price did right. never, never came up. Right. You know, distribution came up a little bit. So because of that one individual, we are now, our, our, best, our greatest readership 
from 2021 to 2022 was in Cannes, Monaco, south of France, oh, Australia. Oh, very cool, very cool. So, yeah. I mean, talk about word of mouth. Yeah, right? yeah, right. So you never know, like I always tell my friends and, and um, folks that when we're out is you never know who you're sitting next to. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, just, I mean, just be yourself. And if, when you need to believe in your product, whether or not it's tangible or intangible, advertising or a widget. If right. you don't believe in it, that comes across. Yeah, ab- absolutely. So that was the moment where I was like, "Wow, if I I I can talk to anybody." Yeah, yeah. You found some you found some global appeal. I, I did. Yeah, I did. And I was really I had to after I hung up that phone, I really had to go for a coffee. Yeah. And um, just say, "Wow, that's it." it really, it, happened. that's freaking amazing, man. It's, it's, so I mean, that just opened up a whole other mindset for me. Yeah, yeah. You know, so. So, so I love this story so far. Um, you know, just just to kind of um, stay on track too. With th- this series is largely for new people who are starting businesses, people who aren't sure what what's going to happen, where that's going to you know, lead them. You know, a lot a lot of times, you know, they start out with a big menu of different things mm-hmm. that they do, and and it takes a, a, a client or it takes like a, a specific moment, like a catalyst, to really show them where their their bread is buttered, so to speak. Um, and, and so, so I do like to, even though it's a little bit in the weeds, I do like to get a little bit into like the the piece of this where you're you're generating enough money to keep this as a full time job. Was this largely through advertisers, subscriptions? Like, where was it that you found? Uh, yeah, it's it's the advertising. The advertising. It's the okay. advertising. Um, the subscriptions um, are not cheap either. Right. Right. So uh, that's a big help, but you're not going to sustain. Um, your business and your right. car payment on just subscriptions. Right, right. So the advertising is where it's at, but we're, we're huge believers in added value. Right. So, so added value is the, is the way that we're going. So, and that's a great that you asked that it, question because now that we're, we've, we've revamped a lot of the pricing. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's very tailored. It's, it's a very personal and very tailored situation that we have mm. to have the conversation with each individual to see what works for them and what makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. What, if you don't mind describing, uh, what, what do you mean by added value? Added value means going above and beyond what the individual res- expects. Okay. So if you had your company maybe advertise a full page, cause we, mm-hmm. and also just keep it simple. Right. So we have, we have one price, one option. Right, right, right. right? It's 1500 bucks for a full page color. That's it. Right, right. That's it. Seven magazine titles that we have. It's across the board. It doesn't get complicated. Yeah. So yeah. the added value would be, well, if you're just starting out, let's take a look at what your goals are, right. short term mostly, right? And what you need. If okay, so if you're opening up a bakery, and you don't have a lot of social media experience, or don't have any at all, or right. but you're a great baker, you know, you can you can run a company, but you not might not be a great salesperson, right? Right. So yeah. we can certainly find someone to help you get the social media person. Get someone to represent your company. Mm-hmm, Say mm-hmm. you have great you have great cupcakes, but you are terrified of public speaking. Right, right, right. <laughs> I mean, so what do you do? So anyone that's starting up, just you know, I go old school. I just take a pen, a legal pad, mm-hmm. and a nice pen because nice pens make me feel good. Absolutely. And free write, jot down what your goals are, not necessarily money, or ex- you know exorbitant dreams just mm-hmm, say hey mm-hmm. how am i going to make the car payment how am i going to do this if i leave my job yep who am i going to talk to friends and family just map it out and yeah, find someone there's all you know there's resources in delaware you know the sbdc mm-hmm. you've got score yep. you know, you've got a ton of people at the university of delaware you've got dell tech yep yep we had uh you newcastle know? county chamber of commerce R- on right you have us weeks ago oh, you, you got you got us can look course. for our links below being Right. You can hit us up anytime you'd like. That's actually a, a great segue. Um, and it sounds like you I asked this question to a lot of people, but <laughs> you sound like you have a, 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 a really broad knowledge on this, which is like what, what's unique about the Delaware market is, of course, that it's small. Right. So everyone's very, very connected. But on the other yeah. end of the spectrum, it's small. Right. So it, you have to sometimes go outside this realm to find your clientele. You like, do. You well, do. Can you can you tell us a little bit about what you've really enjoyed about these uh, smaller markets and then also maybe some pain points as well? Oh, yeah. Well, sure. Well, the, the thing that I found is, is I feel fortunate because um, I started aggressively early, like back in mm-hmm. the 2000 era mm-hmm. when I got really lucky to take to shoot that fashion show 
to mingle with the, with folks. So my networking skills skills my my networking capability mm -hmm. was was more that I had to do that. Right. Right. So so that was more feast or famine. It was it was necessity mm -hmm. to kind of get out there and say, hey, if this is what I want to do, right, then you need to talk to people. Right. And I don't care if you know texting and all the new technology is great, but th there's still that aspect of face to face. And if you reach out to someone and shake their hand with a good handshake, yeah, that's that's it. So Delaware it is all about that. Right. Okay. So we know um, that it's a very it's a it's a small town. I mean, I've, I've, there's people in here that I recognize, yep. you know, that I don't know their name, but I, I can, I've seen them before. And I haven't been in Delaware because I'm back and forth to Philly and stuff like that. And right. um, so I think that's a, that's a double-edged sword sometimes, yeah. but you need to work that in your favor. Yeah. Okay. You don't need to, when, once you start considering yourself, um, I think that you should probably take a step back and say, look, I have this great community here. Mm -hmm. It's it's a tight knit group. If I'm whatever industry I'm in, mm -hmm. th there's someone here for that. So yeah. even though it's a small a small town, kind of sorta, there there's so many folks here that are into different things. Yeah. So it's this being small is great where you have unlimited networking capabilities. Yeah. yeah. You can go around. You can call. You can go around. You can host a small event for for pennies. Um, that's really the beauty of it. Yeah. I mean, go down on any night of the week or, you know, just do some, do your, some of your homework, find out where the people that you want to approach, mm -hmm. find out where they hang out right? and just go down there and introduce yourself, get some nice business cards. Now, the other hand, mm -hmm. <laughs> if you happen to make a mistake or yeah. uh, represent yourself in the wrong way, that word can travel very quickly. Yeah. And I'm speaking from experience, um, that, you know, it can kind of burn you. Yep. But with that, I you you need to take that negative energy and just turn that around. Yeah. And if you're if you're believing in what you're selling, and ju you know, p and if they don't have the patience with you, and to recognize that you're out here doing your thing. Yeah. And if you just if you make one mistake, which is human, then you Absolutely. know what? Then you may not be a client in the future anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And that gets back to where we we're saying earlier. It's better to have five good clients. Yeah. Than. 30 people that are nonsense just running you around. Yeah, yeah. So I think I think it's a two-way street. And even though it's a small town, it, it's all just humanity. Yeah. So it, it's, it doesn't matter if you're in Delaware or New York. You need, to, you need to represent yourself and just say, look, this is what I'm doing. Yeah. No, put, I, put yourself out there. I understand that. Well, through this series, you know, I've, I've learned a lot about the different – you know, the different industries that, that people are growing small businesses mm -hmm. in. And, and obviously construction is one where referrals, a lot of these guys, once they do a couple good jobs in this area, they don't ever need to advertise again because right. the referrals outpace the, the amount of work that they can even do. Um, but then, like you said, double-edged sword, right. you have one job that doesn't go well and bam, it spreads like right. wildfire. And that's why I think you need to be consistent in your advertising and your image and your branding. Yeah. Because yeah. you can't please everyone. And even if you've, you've gone over and above and you've done the added value and you've added, you know, you've, you've stained their deck even though they didn't request that. You're like, right. hey, we'll do this for you as a, as a yeah. whatever. Um, it's, you know, you, they can still come back. You know, they can still come back. You just, that's just part of the business. Yeah. You know, and I think it's the beauty of it too. So you, you mentioned branding and, and I would be amiss to not ask you one or two questions on branding while I have someone here with so many, representing so many different brands. Um, but, but so... Are, are, are you like very hands on in all of these? So when you go to the website and again, you can check out society media right here and you can take a look at all the different projects he's involved with. Are, are you doing a lot of consulting on these brands as well? Or do people come with you with mostly finished products? And you help them get, get it out to the world. Like w where is kind of that role? Cause branding is, you know, you and I know oh, yeah. it, the more you do up front, the better you brand, the easier right. the path gets. But w w I, what's your role in, in that space? Oh man. I mean, do, do you have, I mean, you have till midnight because we'll, we'll I'm, I'm going we'll to have you back talk. in season two for sure. But, but I, okay, real quick. There's two parts to that answer. Yeah. Branding, I think, is very personal. Yeah. Um, and I think as a human being, you need to morph into your brand. Yeah. Okay, so if you ask anyone what I wore last year at this time, yeah, they're going to tell you I wore all black. <laughs> <laughs> and 
a decent watch or whatever and just a, a v-neck or a t-shirt yeah. and so i think branding starts from the heart you right. need to find an image yeah. have, you, have you ever watched um million dollar listing yeah like there's yeah. okay so one guy's or whatever one guy's like bang or pow right, right that's right. like his shtick right yeah, so yeah. wherever he goes that's okay true. so now you can ask uh, again where we go to new york we go to philly it's a year later yeah. Right. And typically I'm in the same outfit. Yep. I mean, not the same outfit. I mean, you know, I, you know, I have 30 black jackets. Of and course. I, yeah. number, I number my <laughs> T-shirts. We'll walk in and they'll be like, hey, Christian, what's up, man? Haven't seen you in like a year. Yeah. Right. And and I just out of, just out of the research. I'm like, how do you remember that? Yeah. I'm like, oh, man, you you know, it's, it's the uh, the whole the outfit. Right. We, we call right. it a costume or a uniform. Because that's the way I treat it. Yeah. yeah. So when you become when when people when you set yourself aside on your own branding, and you become it. Right. And right. you walk in. And, I mean, you know, it's not the same exact outfit all the time. Yeah, yeah. Well, but I if you have, like, you a purple mean, tie or, like, a nice – or a look, like, a look that you kind of adapt. Yeah, it, it carries a lot of the, the extra effort for you. Where that's when right. you walk into a room, rather than having to reintroduce yourself, remind people Correct. what your name is. Correct. I mean, that's a, that's a really – if you have to remind people your company name or right. your own name – you, you know, you, you did not successfully imprint on them the first C- correct, time. Correct, correct. So that just goes into the, to the model is where you brand your product as well. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. even though we have, we're, we're launching, I think in the next six months, we'll have eight different titles yeah. where it's everything from um, like a plant-based lifestyle living yep. to, to a hot rod uh, and uh, extreme sports magazine. Yep. Um, it's, it's all kind of under the same umbrella where you'll know it's me, mm-hmm. even though you kind of don't. Right, right, um, right. So to answer your question, I am so hands-on. Yeah. And yeah. the branding and the, the, the color scheme and, and everything is that because I'm inspired by the people that I talk to. Yeah, yeah. All the time. Yep. Um, the people that we talk to, like, out of the country and in the big cities in New York. And, I mean, just hanging out. We're just hanging out. I mean, in here, I mean, the brick wall, you know, the stitch house is, oh, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's very, very, well very urban and very yep. cosmopolitan. And yep. uh, I get inspired very easily by the smallest things. Yeah. So um, th- that's I feel fortunate for that. Yeah. So I can I can come up with. So we're doing like an extreme sports magazine, which has a lot of um, like like BMX, uh, skiing, snowboarding, right, right. Um Badminton and croquet. Okay. I know that's not really extreme, but uh, it can be. Kidding. It can be. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's it's inspired by a, a lot of a mm-hmm. lot of things. Yeah. The, yeah. You know, so I think I'm lucky enough to have that sort of eye where I can take a look at something and be and just do a whole go off and do a whole line on it. Yeah. It could be anything, nature or anything. Yeah. Well, you you know you've you've definitely set me up with with many segues here. I love this. I mean, <laughs> honestly, it's it's. I want to keep these digestible, you know, around 20, 25 minutes. Yes. Uh, but it's very clear I'm going to have to have you back here again. Oh, thank you. Um, if, if for no other reason, I mean, maybe we do a little offshoot where we do a, a couple minutes on each of these brands because it's it's so neat to see someone who's curating, like, so many different projects. Because each of those on your site, that's a small business in its own right, right. you know. So, so you're really, you know, you're really kind of bringing together a lot of um, neat products, neat brands. And and I do want to make sure before we head out to touch on your newest brand. So you have a cooking show. Yes. And very excited about that. L- last week we interviewed, uh, or I, I spoke with uh, Jason a- Aviles um, from Wilmington Greenbox Green Box, Green Box yes. Kitchen. Cool mission. Place great looks mission. amazing. Exactly. Yeah, and he was doing the vegan cooking. He was very very passionate about like mind body soul all yep. that stuff. And yours yours also looks like it, it's a it's a, a a nice touch on like healthy eating, healthy living. Can you tell us a little bit about? Let me get this right. Thirty seconds to savory. Thirty seconds to savory. And you're the host. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Tell, tell I, us I'm a the bit host. About Thirty seconds to savory. Um, I'm the host, and and I wanted just to to add one more thing about the startup and everything. Yeah. Um, and which applies to thirty seconds to savory as well. I, I mm-hmm. think that when when you attach yourself to a mission, yeah, I think that is probably one of the most important aspects to get rocking and rolling. Yeah. Right. So yeah. whether or not it's the veterans, you know, a veteran, which you know, I have veterans in my family. I have, yeah, I saw your yeah. You know, I, we have uh, fo- folks that that have have you know a very dear friend of mine. Um, you know, had a had a, a a scare with like a breast cancer. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. um, and uh, so I, I think that 
the, the, the older that you get and the, the more things that you see, when you attach yourself to a mission, whether or not it's, you know, um, SPCA, you know, animals, uh, yeah. anim saving animals, um, yeah. anything. I mean, you don't need to be, like, out there right, right, protesting. Right, right, yeah, just but, but if you have a mission uh, that you believe in, yeah. be active in that. And, yeah. and I don't care if it's 5%, 2%. You need to give back. Yeah, I saw. So your mission is very close to my heart as well. I, I saw the the wilderness and right. natural spaces. Uh, ten percent of the proceeds going. That's to that. right. That's it's called it's called Mission Ten. Mission Ten. Right. Yeah. So every dime that we get, ten percent goes back. There, there's two options. One, you can choose your you can choose the the charity or the mission that you want us to donate to. Okay. And you'll get a plaque. Nice. Um, or we can choose and do it ourselves. Yeah. You know, and then we have proof sent to you. But yeah, we're, we're big on um, the, the breast cancer. We're big on animal rights and things like that. But like, again, we're not out there protesting because we don't, we don't preach it. We're not preachy. Right, right. But leading into 30 Seconds of Savory. Um, Great segue. Thank I, you. Of course. <laughs> leading into that, um, well, when, you know, I, I was a little, a little heavier back 10 years, you know, five or six years ago right, right. as far as um, the, uh, the weight. And uh, so... I just decided I, I met a couple of folks that were on a different sort of um, different sort of vibe. Yeah. You know, and had some fine wine and had some dinners over there. And mm -hmm. uh, the technique and the cooking was amazing. So uh, I decided to kind of explore that. Yeah. And um, I, I lost a few pounds, you know, felt a lot better. Yeah. And decided that I hit 50 mm -hmm. um, recently. So that that's kind of the that's. That's that was a big deal. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, to, to keep up with the times, and the trends and to keep right. running around through the cities, uh, you need the energy <laughs> level. Yeah. So it's it's um, it's not only function and fashion, but it just it works. Yeah. So 30 Seconds to Savory is a is a small show uh, with episodes that we're building upon right now with just plant based uh, ingredients. Yeah. And again, wow. we're, we're not really preaching it, even though we do we do talk to a lot of folks and. Um, uh, you know, uh, we're a big fan of the Game Changers mm -hmm. that was on Netflix. And we talked to those folks uh, a lot and Very take cool. a lot of inspiration from them. Yeah. And we just rolled out our own thing, like in our in our own kitchen. And uh, it's 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 to it's to appeal not to the the crazy vegan crowd. Right, right. You know, we're we're not. You know, it's it's to appeal to the folks that want to change their diet. Right. That give it a shot. You know, you don't go have to go cold turkey. You just try this, try that. Yeah. You know. And we pair it up with some awesome wines. And by crazy, you mean crazy healthy. I crazy know you healthy, mean. exactly. <laughs> right. You don't need to like, right. See this in you. Correct. Because <laughs> a lot of the folks that we're appealing to are are a little bit older, so they're right, set in their right, ways. Right. 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 Uh, my mom's eighty, mm -hmm. and she went mostly plant based. Okay. Because she's eighty, and she had some things go on. So is this is this the didn't she start a, a business recently? But yeah. And speaking of Delaware businesses, small business, my mom. Um, who was uh, 35 years at a big company in Delaware, uh, is recently starting her own baking muffins um, business. Okay, and these are plant-based? Th no, they're not. Oh, okay. See, okay. they are not. So, oh, okay, gotcha. See, gotcha. she's not quite there yet. Okay, yeah. And ne neither is the ingredient. So plant-based blueberry muffins, tough. Yeah, yeah. So, we're again, we're like easing into it. Now, we will have a vegan option, that's yeah. for sure. But, yeah, she's 80. She, she, she makes a hell of a muffin. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Friends and family are scooping them up. Um, it'll be. It's called Good Charlotte. Good Charlotte. Good Charlotte. Dot co. Good Charlotte. Dot co. I like and, that. And uh, we're launching in mid January. Nice. Right out of uh, North Wilmington. So you will definitely be seeing and hearing from us. So that's awesome. How that's an inspiration right then and there for me yeah. to like move on. I mean, I I'm I'm getting inspired myself hearing <laughs> you. To, I mean, you're so full of energy. You're, you talk about your projects with such passion. Oh, because I. It's I, very I, clear you live this. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you have to. Otherwise. I, I love your brand, too, by the way. Thank you, know, you I was man. looking I appreciate at you that. in the pool. I love your brand. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. You know. um, but, yeah, the 30 Seconds of Savory, you'll see it. Uh, we're getting a lot of, lot of great, great response from it. And it's cool. It's just, it's not, it's not your normal plant-based vegan video where we're just frying something up in the kitchen for 30 seconds and there's no takeaway. Yeah. Getting back to that added value thing. I believe everyone needs a, a takeaway from something. So, You'll leave smiling, and you'll learn something. It's awesome. I love it. We'll definitely check out 30 Seconds to Savory. Thank you. Um, you know, in the interest of time, 
you know, there's so many projects. Check out Society Media as well. I try to give enough time. Wait, so 30 Seconds of Savory. And also check out Society Media thank you. as well. Um, Christian Shane Dougherty. Oh, thank you so much, man, Aaron. It was a pleasure, you. man. Thank you to Stitch House for having me. It's a beautiful place. I'm going to go and enjoy some more beers. Yeah, yeah. And I will definitely be having you back uh, season two. You, I'd you, be honored. I'd you be have honored. a wealth of knowledge. And, and honestly, I mean, I, I wish we could keep this all on camera, but I have so many little questions about the advertising world, the branding world, all that stuff. I'm around. Um, but so, so thank you again for coming out. Really uh, appreciate it's you. It's an honor. Thank you yeah. so much, sir. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you for Stitch House for having us. That wraps up week 15 of It's Business Time. Have a good new year, y'all. Happy new year. Happy new year. It's business.